These moments of comfort have been rare in recent weeks, as Selma and her autistic son are moved between hotels. Unsure of how long each stay will last, but adamant they cannot return to the place they once called home. They call the police on me and my kid, and I don't know why, what I need to do. And my son, every single time when I knocked on their door, he would hide underneath the bed and he's saying to me, are oh, you going to get arrested, mommy? So trauma after trauma, why am I being dealt with this? How? How? Is this, is no is this normal? It is a journey no mother should have to make to search for her son in the most desperate of circumstances. But as Julie arrived in Barcelona this morning, she still believes there is a chance they can find him. There are two main reasons for that. The first one really is to stay across this investigation. As you heard in my report, there appears to be a bit of a tension between what Spanish police are saying and what West Midlands police are saying. And as a result, this investigation has really only got going here in Barcelona in the last 48 hours. It was on the 10th of April 1973 when a flight from Bristol crashed in a snowstorm after missing the runway in Basel. It carried mostly women who were on organised day trips from Somerset. 108 people were killed. Uh, horrendous. You don't think it's happening to you? And it was just everybody that were in, in the party from Kongsbury um, who had their tickets sold that didn't come back. See you later, she said, yeah, see you later. And well, later never came. There will be a memorial service here on Monday, on the day of the anniversary, as well as a service in Basel to commemorate the 108 people who lost their lives that day, that forever changed these communities in Somerset. And it has been an incredibly emotional day as families who've lost loved ones while at university have travelled from right across the country to deliver that petition to 10 Downing Street, signed by nearly 130,000 people and calling for a legal duty of care to be implemented at all universities. And when you combine that with the fact that we are predicted to see rising sea levels for many more decades now, that's what gets people really concerned. Now, I spoke to a lady today who runs the local news agent here, and she says if nothing is done at this big climate change summit, she's worried that for future generations, this place could disappear altogether. Touching down on St Mary's this morning, you can see hundreds of rocks and small islands. Experts say thousands of years ago this used to be one piece of land, but now only the highest points remain. By lighting cardboard underneath this police van, the jury agreed Ryan Roberts was trying to endanger the life of the officer inside. Moments later, he goes up to him to say, you're going to go bang. It was one of a number of offences that night which saw Roberts climb on top of Bridewell Police Station and lead the crowd in anti-police chants. We're just outside Bridewell Police Station where hundreds of protesters have actually been sitting down, but they've actually all just stood up now to clear a lane of the road to allow a lorry to come through. And that really sums up the co cooperation between protesters and police tonight. It has been very peaceful as we go through this demonstration. One year on, the scars of the explosion are still there for everyone to see. I had a phone call from my elder son trying to tell me that dad was involved and um, sorry. And yeah, that was uh, that was when we, f we kept saying, well, maybe jokingly, maybe he'd gone to Costa to get a Costco to get a coffee, you know, maybe he's he's sort of not on site and because uh, they couldn't find him. He was the missing person. As dawn broke in Wells, the bells of the cathedral rang and the flags hung at half-mast in tribute to Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. Another person I saw today told me that they thought they spotted King Charles arriving at the estate just two weeks ago, seeming uh, to want to get away from it all before the coronation this weekend. And although, as you said, uh, Buckingham Palace is now his primary residence, it's clear he still views Highgrove Estate as his home and residents clearly welcome him here still.